Our next speaker is Jeff Tigler of the Division of Medical Sciences, who will speak to us about building better vaccines by learning the language of the immune system. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here today. Oh, wow, those are some tough acts to follow. So vaccines are one of the greatest triumphs of medical science, forever changing the way we view infectious disease. In fact, every year, vaccines are responsible for saving three million lives worldwide. And despite this remarkable success, we here all know that making vaccines against some of our biggest challenges has proven intractable. It's kind of a space race of our generation. And so this started me first asking the question, why is it so hard to make new vaccines against some of our biggest diseases? And while the answer to this question is complicated, as it turns out, much of it lies in the point that our current trial and error way of making vaccines really only attacks diseases in one particular way, which is making antibodies that stick to an incoming invader and blocking it from infecting our cells. And while we've been very fortunate that many diseases, such as smallpox, measles, and others, are vulnerable to this type of attack, we know that this only represents a small subset in a breadth of ways our immune system can fight infections. So what then, if we could harness this wealth of possibilities to make new and powerful vaccines against some of our biggest diseases? And the key to this is a group of proteins known as cytokines. Now I'm sure everyone here has heard of cytokines. Just as we use words to convey ideas and meanings to one another, cytokines are the language of the immune system. For example, say you're exposed to a virus. Well, not you in particular. Upon noticing the incoming invader, cells in your body will produce cytokines. And what these then serve to do is they inform the different arms of the immune system as to the type, nature, and location of the incoming invader. And importantly, also coordinate how those arms of the immune system will then attack and eliminate the invader. But despite the central importance of cytokines in determining immune responses, they've been largely ignored in vaccine research. And so part of the problem we have in making new vaccines is that we in the immune system aren't speaking the same language. And this is where my research comes in. My work focuses on uncovering the ways the immune system is driven to attack a target in different and powerful ways. And I do this utilizing a panel of experimental vaccines that have shown various levels of efficacy in a model of HIV infection. And the tool our laboratory uses to do this are something called viral vectors. Now, this isn't just a grainy picture of some dice I took over the weekend. These are what are called adenoviruses. They normally just cause the common cold in people. But these are the basic material our laboratory uses to produce viral vectors. And how we do this is we take the virus and then remove its genetic information and then gut it for whatever makes it normally cause disease in people. In its place, we put a small piece of something we want to, the immune system to learn how to attack or a target and then put these pieces back together and put it back into the virus, turning it into a viral vector. And so these are important in a study done in my laboratory, where vectors built off of several different flavors of adenoviruses were made, but importantly, all telling the immune system to attack the exact same thing. These were then used to vaccinate animals in a model of HIV infection, and then our laboratory looked for protection against disease. And to my surprise, even though we told the immune system to attack the exact same thing with these vaccines, immediately following vaccination, they had very different types of cytokines in their bloodstreams, indicating that their immune systems had been driven to respond to the vaccine in different ways. And furthermore, when we look for protection against disease, these groups of animals had very different levels of protection against disease, also highlighting the point that their immune system had been driven to attack that particular target in different ways. And so the most important part from this study is that those different immune responses weren't caused by the target themselves, but rather were caused by the vectors inducing different types of cytokines in the body, which then drove the immune system to attack that target in different ways, highlighting the point that, as with many things in life, when you're telling the immune system to attack something, it's not just what you say, but it's also how you say it. And so this fundamentally changes how we view, va or how we view vaccine vectors, in that they're not all just passive shuttles, but rather they're all profoundly different from one another. And moreover, they represent a toolbox for vaccine research, and that they all induce their own characteristic types of cytokines, 
able to push the immune system to respond to the target they're carrying in different and powerful ways. And so this has the opportunity then to completely revolutionize how we view vaccine design in that instead of just starting from scratch in a trial and error way, we look forward to the time where we can pick the target we want to attack, select from a panel of vaccine vectors that we know give us different types of immune responses against the vaccine vectors or against the targets they're carrying, pick the one that gives us the type of response we want, and then start our vaccine construction from there, allowing us to bypass years of trial and error research saving millions of dollars, and most importantly, thousands of lives. Thank you. <laughs>